You can use the distributive property to break apart numbers to make them easier to, to divide. We've used the distributive property before. Who can give me an example of what the distributive property might look like? Think for a moment. How have we used the distributive property in the past? Okay, so what he's saying is that you can break apart numbers. Um, you can half them, or we can break them apart to numbers that will be more compatible, right? So if we had this number, 30 times 42, how can I break that up and use the distributive property to make that easier to multiply? How would I break that up? I want everybody to think about it. How do I break this number up to, to make it where I'm using the distributive property to make that multiplication easier? Ethan. 40 plus 2. So I'm breaking apart the 40. Two to make it 40 plus 2. So this is the addition part. We call that addition. And then we're going to use the distributive property to find the answer. What does the distributive property tell me I can do? Just one person, two people. What does the distributive property tell me I can do with this now? Come on, be brave. There we go. Custom. Go. 30 times 40, and then plus, because this is a plus here, 30 times 2. That the distributive property allows me to do that. Okay? Oh, I don't have that answer. So today we're going to use the distributive property for division. We have a rectangle. <coughs> A rectangle um, that to model 69 divided by 3. So we're going to shade three columns until we have 69 squares. So columns are, well, it looks like we have to go this way. So we're just going to shade across. I'm doing three by, I'm just counting. Can you tell how fast I'm counting? No. <laughs> all the way to there. Okay, I've counted 69 <coughs> boxes all the way across in columns of three. Okay, how many groups of three did I make there? Do you guys remember from yesterday or how many groups of three did I make then? Rachel? 23. If I, <clears throat> if I count my rows across, I have, actually those are columns. If I count my columns across, I have 23. So I have 23 groups of three. Another way they're doing it is to think of 69 as 60 plus 9. What are they planning to do with that, do you think? 60 plus 9. Does that look familiar to something I just did up here? Yes? No? Okay. So if I do 60 plus 9, I'm going to have this array that's 60 and 3, and then this is going to be 9 and 3, which is what they have up here. So I've done 69 divided by 3 to be 60 divided by 3 and 9 divided by 3. Where did I get the 60 and 9? Who would like to explain it to the rest of the class? Where did I get the 60 and where did I get the 9? Why can't I just put those out there like that? Aaron, explain it to the class. You got 60 and then 9 becomes 69. 69, and how did I know that 60 and 9 is what I should have for those two numbers? Because 60 are the first Okay, so what I'm trying to get at is how did, um, I know that 69, 60 and 9 comes from the number 69, but how come those work, why does that work? Why can I do 60 and 9, how does that relate to the number 69? Six 
There you go. So 60 plus 9 equals 69. So we can do 60 and 9, and we have the plus right here to keep the distributive property working for us. Okay. So now, is it easier for me to do 60 divided by 3? Yes. Yes, it sure is. What is 60 divided by 3? 20. No, just 60. 60 divided by 3. Raise your hand when you know. Go ahead, Owen. 20. And what is 9 divided by 3? Raise your hand when you know. Nicholas? So I can do 20 plus 3 equals 23. Okay. And I want to go back to this because it, it, it has this as its own method. This is basically the same thing as this. You've blocked out your graph paper to show 20, 20 by 3 equals, how much did this equal? 60. And 9 times 3 equals, or n. This is a 3. So they're doing it on the graph. It's just backwards of what we did with the multiplication. So if what two numbers equaled 60? So you're basically still doing the distributive property. You're making a box of 60 and a box with 9 in them. And you're deciding, OK, that was 3. 3 times what number got me to 60? And 3 times what number got me to 9? So that's how the graph part of it worked. Okay. Um, D says outline another model to show 68 divided by 4. So in that case, we're going to also do 4. What number should I, um, what number am I going to be looking for to be in the middle here, do you think? 68. Not 68, I'm going to try to do it like this. So I'm going to break it apart. Which number should I be going for here, maybe? Or maybe something smaller. Can you get a number out of 30, I mean out of 68 that's divisible by 4? What's a good number that you know off the top of your head that comes from 60, um, 4 goes into in under 68? What do you think, Daniel? 3 maybe? 3 times 4 is 12. That's really low. Can we go bigger? Yeah. Owen? 10 times 4 is what? 40. 40. So let's do a 10. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Here's a 10. 10 by 4, and that equaled 40. So what does my next box have to equal? If I, if I did 40, who said 28? Yeah. Haley. So what did, Haley, would you explain why you have 28 as your answer? You're right. So then explain why. <laughs> Like, how did you know we did 40 already? How did you know that the rest needed to be 28? Because that was the next number that you have to add. To get. So, to get from 40 to 68, you have to add 28 to get your total of 68 over here. Okay? So, if I want this box to be 28 in the middle here, is 28 divisible by 4? Yes. Yes. What number times 4 equals 28? Plus? 7. 7. So I'm going to go over 7 more. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then up here, I'm going to call that 7. Because that's how many I went over. So then my answer should be 4 times this number totaled, which equals 17. 4 times 17 equals 17. 68. Okay, here if we do it this way, we can do 40 and 28. 40 divided by 4 was 10, and 28 divided by 4 was 7, so 10 plus 7 equals 17. Okay. Is there some light bulbs for some people there? Uh, did you guys get to write this in yesterday? Yeah. No, I didn't. Raise your hand if you did not write this in yesterday. Okay, right now, write it in. Using base 10 blocks, I'll review this part down at the bottom. It says you can make 68 divided by, divided by 4 using base 10 blocks. 
Okay? So they put out how many 10 sticks would there be? Total for 68. Six. Six. Very good. Bella's away. Anybody else? How many ones will there be to show 68? Eight. 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 Hey, Daniel's awake too. Anybody else awake with me here today? Me. I'm awake. Okay, three, two, one. All right. We can divide this into four equal groups. If this was a package of, package of stickers and you guys had a 10 pack of stickers and these were all 10 packs of stickers and these were all single stickers. If I asked you to divide that between yourself and three of your friends, so that's how many people total? Five. Four. Four. Yourself and three of your friends is how many people total? Four. Four. So if I asked you, if I asked you to divide that among those four people, you can do it. You would take your stickers and you would go, okay, well, we each get a whole row. We each get a whole row, and that's what they've done here. Stop. Okay, so they've, they've given each person, a, each group, a whole row of stickers. And then they would take the rest and cut them up into individuals, right? Wouldn't you take the rest of them and cut them into individual stickers so that you can divvy them out evenly? Okay? And so they've taken... Here's these two. They've cut those into, into groups and divvied them out equally here. So this is 10, and 10 is how much total? 20. 20. And if I was going to divvy that up, I would give 20 divided by the four groups is how many stickers? 20 divided by 4? 60. No, I'm listen to the question. 20 divided by 4. Raise your hand when you know. What is 20 divided by 4? Five. 5. So they split those up and gave everybody 5 more stickers. But there's still these left over over here. Okay? And so they take these left over 8 and divide it by 4. What's 8 divided by 4? No, see this? What is it? 2. So then they each got 2 more and that's what they did down here. So whoever's doing that extended number calling needs to stop it. Alright, so... In this first step, they've t okay, first we'll write down our 10 bucks. We had 10, we had 60, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, plus the 8. And this step is where they took the four, long, the four longs and then added an additional 5 because they divided the extra 20 into groups. And so 60 divided by 4, how much are in each of these groups? Raise your hand when you can tell me. Not this. But just these groups here. How many are in each of those groups? John? 15. Back table. It's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. What is 15 plus 15? Do it in your head real quick. What is 15 plus 15? 30. 30. So this is two 15s, right? If I had two more 15s, I have another 30. What's 30 plus 30? 60. So if I do 60 divided by 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 15s. That's one of those numbers that as you get older, you'll automatically remember how much two 15s are or how much four 15s are. Three 15s is 45. Those are kind of, you'll get to know those. All right, so now we've divided the last 8 divided by 4, which was 2. And we put those on right here. So now we can say the 15 plus the 2 equals 17. And this is how you would do it using base 10 blocks.